Hey guys and welcome to a new series today where we're going to take a look at the June 2019 Further Maths Core Pure 2 paper. So this is the A level exam, not the AS. So if you've only studied the AS, this might be a bit past um, the scope of what you've learned just yet. But be sure to subscribe, we're going to be going through the AS and um, the A level papers in full. So check them out when they're up. So anyway, let's jump into question one. So we have a question here on hyperbolic functions and specifically hyperbolic tan. So part A, question one, just asks us to prove that the inverse of hyperbolic tan is equal to a half ln 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And we have to state the value of the constant k here. But we'll do that at the very end once we've shown this um, is true. So 5 max. So let's jump right into this. So we've got to prove that the inverse of hyperbolic tan is equal to this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to let y equal this expression here, this hyperbolic tan inverse. So hyperbolic tan inverse. of x. Okay, so if i times both sides now by hyperbolic tan, what I'm going to get is hyperbolic tan of y. So this would be hyperbolic tan of y. And that will just be equal to x now, okay? Because if you times this side by hyperbolic tan, it'll just cancel, you just get left with x. Now, we've got hyperbolic tan uh, of y. So now we can use the trig identities that we know for hyperbolic functions. So this would be the same as hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cos. So plugging in those exponential definitions now, what I know is that x is going to be equal. So I'm writing this in terms of exponential now, the exponential definitions. This will be e to the y, because it's in terms of y. So e to the y minus e to the minus y divided by e to the y plus e to the minus y. Okay, so just be careful you get them the right way around. e to the minus y. So we've got our exponential definition now. Now all we need to do is start um, manipulating this. And it's good that we've got an, you know, this in terms of the exponential now, because we're going to have to do analog at some point to get the lun, right? So we know we're on the right path with this. So now I can times through both sides by well, think about this as being 1 over e to the y. So I'm going to times through now by e to the y um, on this side here, just to get rid of the minus y here. So what that would give would be e to the 2y minus 1, because this is minus. So that would give me minus 1. And this will be e to the 2y plus 1. So hopefully this is all still pretty straightforward. Just for now. I'm just timing through by e to the y. So therefore, I'm going to times now both sides by e to the 2y plus 1 to get rid of this denominator. So I'm going to have x lots of e to the 2y plus 1. This is going to be equal to e to the 2y minus 1. Like so. Now I'm going to times through here on this left-hand side to get this in terms of x. So that'll be x e to the 2y. plus x, and it's going to be equal to just e to the 2y plus, uh, minus 1, sorry. Now here, I want to get this in terms of e to the 2y just on its own, on one side, so then I can anti-log. So, to do that, I'm going to take this e to the 2y across here. So, if we do that, um, in fact, what I'll actually do is I'll take this x e to the 2y across onto this side, and then I'll keep this as positive, so it'll be x plus 1 on this side. So if I do that, that's going to be e to the 2y, e to the 2y minus x e to the 2y. So I'm just going to get this all in terms of e to the 2y now. This will be equal to x plus 1. So x plus 1. Now I can factor out the e to the 2y. So e to the 2y. That's going to be 1 minus x. So 1 minus x, this is still equal to x plus 1, x plus 1, and now I can divide through by 1 minus x. So uh, I'll do it over here just so we've got a bit more room. So e to the 2y, that's going to be equal to, I'll put it all in, you know, all the same one. So it's going to be 1 plus x all over 1 minus x, like so. 
Now I'm going to anti-log, and this is looking pretty good, right? We've got 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Um, so we're nearly here now in this form. So if I anti-log this now, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 2y is equal to ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And then finally, just divide through by 2. So therefore, y is equal to ln, uh, half ln, sorry, half ln. I've got my half, half ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And there we have it, because we said at the beginning y is equal to the inverse of hyperbolic sum. And for part b here, well, before I start part b, for the value of the constant k here, for this limitation, think about what's going to happen here. So this is logarithms, right? So if you think about the rules of logarithms, this would be two separate ones. This can be ln of 1 plus x minus ln of 1 minus x. So we've got to think about what values can go in here. Well, I can't have these values, this ln here, be 0, ln of a 0, right? Because that would be an error. So, for example, this top one here, 1 plus x, my x can't be 1, right? But it could just be underneath 1 because these, you know, we're not including the k as well. So, for example, if k is 1, then it'd be fine here because it'd be just less than 1. So 1 minus, say, 0 0.9999, that won't give us an error. But if it was 1, for example, so 1 minus 1, so we'd have ln of 0, we'd get an error. So for your k value, it's just going to be 1. So it's between minus 1 to 1. So jumping into part B now, we're going to use our answer to part A to solve this equation here. So for another five marks for this. So quite a nice introduction to the paper, I'd say. So let's jump straight into this. So we know that 2x equal to hyperbolic tan of ln square root 2 minus 3x. So I can now use our answer for here. But in terms of it being, how it's in terms of x here, we just need to put it in terms of 2x. So times in both sides by hyperbolic inverse of tan, so that'll be tan, hyperbolic tan inverse of 2x, so be careful here, 2x this time, and then this will just give us ln here, because you've got hyperbolic tan, tan by the inverse, you're just going to get left with what's in the bracket here, so it's going to be equal to ln of square root 2 minus 3x. One, two minus three x, perfect. So now we can start going with this. But where I've got this hyperbolic tan inverse, I need to substitute mine in. But instead of it being one plus x, for example, where is an x? It'll be two x in our case. So if I write this down now, this will be a half ln. So it's going to be one plus two x, one plus two x, all over one minus two x, like so. Okay, and then this side will just be this still. This will be ln square root 2 minus 3x. 2 minus 3x. Now I can use the power rule for logarithms. So this half here can come up to the top of the logarithm. So that's going to be ln 1 plus 2, 2x all over 1 minus 2x all to the power of a half. all to the power of a half, and it's going to be equal still to this, so the ln 2 minus 3x. So now we need to start solving this equation. So we've got logs on both sides, we can analog this now, and then we'll get it just in terms of one, uh, in terms of our x here. So analogging this, we're just going to get left with the expression, so I want to get 1 plus 2x, so do it over here, 1 plus 2x all over 1 minus 2x, and then we'll put this in brackets, because this is still to the power of a half. That's going to be equal to 2 minus 3x. So now, because this is a power of a half, I can square both sides here. Oops, I forgot my square root. Square root there, so don't forget your square root. So now, I can square both sides here. So, I'm going to get 1 plus 2x. over 1 minus 2x, and this is going to be equal to 2 minus 3x. Now, times in both sides by 1 minus 2x, we can eliminate this denominator here, and then just solve for x, and we've, we've got it there. So, it's going to be 1 plus 2x, 
is going to be equal to 1 minus 2x times 2 minus 3x. Like so. And now we've just got to solve this. So if I expand all this and then simplify it, what you'll get is 6x squared plus, uh, sorry, minus 9x minus 9x plus 1. And this is equal to 0 if we're solving it. So you'll need quadratic formula for this. This won't factorise nicely. But if you use your quadratic formula, so we'd say therefore x is equal to, now you normally say plus or minus, right? We normally use plus or minus for the start of the equation. But when you're plugging in your values here for your quadratic formula, make sure you test it because remember, x has to be between minus 1 and 1. If you get a value bigger than, say, 1, or smaller than minus 1, then something's gone wrong. So what that actually does is it eliminates the positive solution here. So what we get is 9 minus root 57 all over 12. So you've got to test this on your calculator. So make sure you do 9 plus root 57 over 12, 9 minus root 57 over 12, and you'll see the difference. The 9 plus root 57 over 12 is out of the, the range here for x. And there we have it. That's question 1 fully complete.